Welcome to Weir's Dojang and another Tuesday training tip. I'm Instructor Weir and today we're going to talk about two different principles that we use here at the school. One of them is talking about pulsing a technique, pulse like a heartbeat. The other one we're going to talk about is rocky road or bumpy road. Let's take a look at how these principles play out and how they apply. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is pulsing a technique. And when I say pulsing, I mean pulsing like a heart rate. Okay, this is going to apply to any time you're dealing with a joint lock where you are manipulating a joint, applying pressure for that pain compliance. So the first way we're going to talk about this is in a bone stand. If I take a bone stand on Mike and I start to apply it, notice how, how he sunk down at first and then he started to raise back up. Okay, his body got used to that pain. If I just have remained constant in that pain, he would actually be able to relax, meditate through it, and be able to counter that. There's two ways to accommodate this to, to make it so he can't do anything about it. The first, I could just apply a ton more pressure and a ton more pain, and that may or may not work, okay? He may be, at that point, resistant to it. He may be doing something. He may have a drug in him that is causing the pain receptors to not react as well, okay? Um, the other thing that could happen is you could damage the joint. And we don't necessarily want to damage that joint, especially if we break the joint. If we break the joint, that gives him a huge rush of endorphins, that gives him an adrenaline rush, and gives him strength that I don't want him to have. I also can't manipulate the joint again at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pulse the technique. I'm going to put him in that lock, and I'm going to apply that pressure over and over and over again. I don't have to apply any more pain. I don't have to apply any more pressure. But watch what happens to his body. If he grabs on, we go into the lock, Okay. Every time I did it, he sunk a little bit lower. Okay, It may not look like a lot here, but when you try this with a training partner, you're going to see how fast they go down on every single pulse of that technique. Be careful when you're doing it because it does get tighter and tighter every time you do it. It gets to be more and more painful. Every time you apply it, the body is going to have a jolt of pain and then relax. And every time he relaxes, you're going to hit him with another jolt of pain. That's what makes it so effective. That's what makes this work so well. If Mike comes over this side here, and I have him in, in a goose, same thing can apply, okay? Goose, okay? He's got the pain, he's relaxing into it, pulse it. His body can't handle it. His body cannot stand that constant pulse of pain. He can't get used to that pain, which allows you to be able to manipulate it easier. So the next one we're going to talk about is what we refer to as rocky road or bumpy road. This is very much like pulsing where it's going to trick the body into thinking one thing or, or relaxing into one thing when you're getting ready to do another. A great way to, that, that we can show how this works is if Mike grabs on and he's really strong, let's say that I want to circle around to do a technique this way, and he's really strong and I can't get his hand to move. If I take my hand and shake it, okay, just a little bit, it's very much like an akami where you like strike disrupts the whole body. That shaking action is going to allow the whole technique to start moving again. So he's really strong, I can't move him out, shake and lift. Okay, if he's really, really strong, I can shake a little bit more. And every, notice how it happened to his body, his whole body started to shake with it. Okay, if I want to try forward, he's really strong. Now I have him in a position where I can take control. That little bit of a shake is going to disrupt his strength. That little bit of a shake is going to you know, if I start to move this way, his body, his brain's thinking, move, I'm moving this way, stop that motion. So that little shake is making his body not know which way I'm moving. And then I can go into another technique and take control of it. Okay, so that little bit of a shake really helps you be able to disrupt Bouquet's body. If he has both hands, that little shake didn't allow him to set. As soon as he went to grab, I just shook a little bit, boom. And now I can take control of it. So a little bit of a shake. Again, this might not look like anything on camera. When you're working with your training partner, have him resist that strength, give a little bit of a shake, and then move into something else. Okay, a little bit of a shake, take a turn. You'll be amazed how well it works. Great, so we talked about two different techniques here, two different principles here. We talked about that pulsing that will continue to send shock waves of pain through the body so they can't relax into it, so they can't meditate through the pain. The body doesn't know how to react to that constant flickering of pain rather than, rather than that constant pressure of pain. We also talked about that rocky road, to be able to do a little bit of a shake to, to disrupt that strength. Okay? These again are two things that look a little bit
funny on camera, I guarantee that when you practice them, you'll be amazed at how well they work. Grab a training partner, give it a shot. Remember, train hard, be good to each other, and have key.